gotten together and figured out that this is this covers most of our bases. This is what people need to know about it in, in the warning. And so, awesome. again, it's and I, I just now noticed that we call this a government warning, which is an interesting <laughs> term because <laughs> the government didn't tell us to put that on there. Yeah. So. You should almost do quotations right yeah. next. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, it's been a it's been a wild ride, and you know, with that self regulation, we actively or I do. Um, uh, go down with different groups here in Texas, mm -hmm. the Texas Hemp Coalition. We actually go speak with our representatives down at the state capitol. Awesome. A lot of them aren't even aware of any of the laws that might be going on the books that pertain to hemp. Not they surprising. can't even pronounce the word uh, cannabinoid, yeah. much less know what it is. And so we act as an extension and experts in that field for them. Awesome. And um, so we look forward to our next session. We're down there. Um, I'm proud to say that I'm the reason this last session that everybody found out what a cannabis was. Hey. And so they were very welcoming. They said that we love it whenever all the hemp and cannabis people come in because it's always a chill vibe that day. Shocking. <laughs> 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 Imagine that. Um, but yeah, again, that goes back to um, we go down there and literally ask them. My friend Shada says, regulate, don't eliminate. Yes. Regulate, don't eliminate. And we beg them to regulate us. There's no other industry. You're not going to see the beer guys or the alcohol mm -hmm. guys going down there. Regulate us. Yeah. Tobacco, nobody's going down there begging for that. But we actively are who are serious and com um, passionate about what we're doing in the industry are down there asking for that. Yeah, I've been saying for years that we're going to have casinos before cannabis is legal here. And it's we're slowly getting there. I obviously, yeah. with every state that touches is medicinal, I feel like we could at least start there and then go from there. But yes. I feel we're going to have a federal legalization before Texas. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Cody? With how you, I don't, yeah, I'm, I'm, not as, I'm not connected to the industry as much yeah. as you, so I, I, yeah, I feel like that'll I, I'll defer to your opinion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so the THC CBD uh, seltzer drink market is still very young. It's roughly five years-ish old, um, and it is a growing market as well, obviously, because everyone either doesn't want to consume alcohol or has... Um, figured out what California sober is, so there's a, a switch when it comes to all that. Now, when it comes to being in a very early on um, young market, what are kind of some of the things you guys are looking at when it comes to building and advertising? And like you said, you're not in the chain stores yet, but how does that look like for the future? Yeah, I mean, so this is it's, it's such a completely different uh, landscape, you know, and in, in beer, when we started, we knew here's the stores that sell beer. Yeah. I'm making beer. I should go talk to those stores. Well, I mean, now it's like, I mean, you know, there's a very, it started very limited and it's only in the last, I don't know, maybe four or five, six months, even that you started seeing it in the total wines and the specs. I mean, before that, we really only found it in independent gas stations and some of the independent liquor stores would, would, would dabble in it. And, you know, the, the head shop type places, those are the places that were dabbling in this. And so the, the fact that the, these bigger chains are picking it up. It's really a sign of more widespread market acceptance mm -hmm. from both or in, from both the consumer and you know the, the the bigger chains out there who have more to lose and 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 on that same vein you know we we distribute our beer through Benny Keith um, and you know Benny <laughs> Keith is very interested and they're they're big distributor yeah. but they're like look I mean we have a, a huge business we have to like you know they're kind of scared of it right they're a little <laughs> bit scared of you know what could happen and so we're we're taking steps on trying to educate them. You know, we, we took them out to the, obviously they've been here and they know what our, our capacity is. So we took, we took the management out to Power Bio Farms to introduce awesome. them and see their operation. They want to make sure it's a, you know, it's just not some kid in a garage trying to make a quick buck. And, <laughs> you know, they're kind of covering their bases. And then, you know, they're, they had a, a meeting with the industry lawyer that um, has had luck uh, convincing others that, yes, this is legal, you're protected kind of stuff. Yeah. So we're kind of waiting to see how it is because we'd love to continue to distribute this to the same same channels. But on the on the on the flip side, there are distributors, smaller distributors, that are ready to go like oh, right yeah, now. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, we're getting we we're getting contacted by distributors quite a bit. Um, in the meantime, we're we're self distributing, and a lot of the work is you know Kim out there yeah. Um, yeah. educate the <laughs> educating the customers <laughs> to the point where I mean you have to register if you want to be able to sell hemp derived products, mm. right? So you get a I don't even think it's called a license. I think it's called a registration. So the there is a process. Uh, it's 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 yeah. relatively easy and painless. And so she's even like making sure we make sure that we only sell to people that have that. And she's educating people on how easy it is to get and helping them through that process mm -hmm. if they need it. 
So, I mean, a lot of the work here is just expanding the number. I think people are, would sell it if they knew they could. Or, yeah. wait, yeah. is this confusing? How do I report? Well, what taxes do I pay? And yeah. The answer is there's no reporting and there's no taxes, which is wild. <laughs> uh, similar, all you do is get this license. Yeah, so, yeah, and then similar to, like, the TABC has a list of licensed TABC holders. Right. There is a um, list of licensed retail, ret hemp retailers Very that nice. you can go down. But basically, like, when I'm out there selling, aside from all the great leads that Martin House sent, any smoke shops. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, to me, if you, as long as you don't have uh, slot machines in the back of your your, <laughs> st your store, I'll be happy to go into yeah. business. And yes, I just said that at publicly. But I mean, it I, is. What I it used is. to call them those stores, and it yeah. is very dodgy. We'll say it that <laughs> yes. way. Yeah. And um, but that's that's where we're targeting. And then even your um, like Thrive Apothecary, your boutique yeah. shops. We're going into them. Lots of restaurants and bars are bringing it in. Yep. So educating their staff. It's really been a fun experience seeing everybody getting excited about having beverage. And awesome. Stuff John, you can cut this if you want, but uh, yeah. I'm just curious. What's what's your background? You said calling on accounts. Oh, so I used to work for just, Republic National. Okay. Um, okay. So for 12 years, I worked for 14 years. I worked for them. So at the end, I was calling all the all the independent liquor okay. stores. Right on. Stores. Okay. Um, cool. So I did see a lot of the. Yeah. Casinos in the back uh, or in the front where they probably shouldn't have been. Uh, yeah. Very interesting people. But there, toward the end, uh, Republic started selling some of the THC stuff as well. However, the drinks weren't as popular because the edibles were so prominent yes. and easier. Yeah. And again, you weren't, nobody was putting them in their cold boxes. Yeah. And so that was a problem. It's like, you would, how are you supposed to either take spots away from beer, which most of them don't want to do, and most of them have already bought that spot, so they're not going to take it away, or are you going to create it somewhere else? Because again, you have to worry about the age, and so 21 should be the age of, yeah. you, know, where you start buying it. Some people probably do 18, but I don't know, every store is obviously going to be different. So mm -hmm. um, that's how I knew all about that. And then I'm back in the wine world now, but I still, I call on um, bars and restaurants really. Okay, so, yeah. cool. Very cool. So, but I, I mean, that's why I was curious because I had seen it before and I hadn't seen much of it since. And I know for a fact that mm -hmm. a lot of the convenience stores don't make that spot in the cold box that they need to. And you're not going to buy this room temperature. This is not Oklahoma beer. Like yeah. Yeah. You, you want it cold you want to drink it right there or obviously when you get home, but however it hits you. So I wanted to you know ask about that because I know that the industry is still so young when it comes to getting everybody educated and making the spots so that it can't get sold. Yeah, you can speak to the spots in the stores. I, yeah, I haven't done any so sales calls on this yet. What so. I have seen is now there's lots of different beverages out mm -hmm. there. Um, they are creating space in the cooler for them because, yeah. I mean, the old saying, it goes, if it's cold, it's sold, yep. right? <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Uh, old school. But um, that's what I'm seeing out in the market, full, um, even – a lot of brands too have great marketing budget, so they're able to provide really nice coolers. Yeah. I mean, you're gonna eventually get to see. I call her Canosaurus Rex. What do y'all call it? We call it dinosaur Dino water. Wa dinosaur water here. Yes. I call it Canosaurus Rex. But <laughs> hopefully, we'll get some of those out in the market because people are asking for them. Yeah. But um, I've even talked with a couple of accounts that have a lot of options as far as these THC beverage goes, and I'm working on providing a marketing piece for them and be like, hey, here's a six variety pack, but it's going to be all our stuff branded on it. Maybe cut that out so nobody just steals my idea. <laughs> but, but that's what I'm working on with them. And um, so you can get like a variety. If you yeah. don't want a six pack of ours, well, maybe you want one or two, but here's other options. And they're going out with the pack that's branded all of our stuff on it to do that. With. That's smart. So, no, I like that a lot. Yeah, because I've been to Sprouts and it is on a back end cap that is like facing the cold area. So it's well, it's almost like, yeah, it's still I mean, half the can's a little bit cold. Yeah, half the can's cold. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, and I mean, we're all adults here, but guys, this is not porn. We don't need mm -hmm. to hide it in the back from the kids. Um, if we put it out front, and that's where we have to come in and be like, hey, the largest demographic right now using cannabis are women over 50. Right. Like, oh, my Nana loves people it. get like, that. <laughs> get that in your head, people. Your, your Chardonnay moms. Yeah. And yeah, they are the ones going out looking for this stuff, so. <clears throat> Yeah. And I cater to them as a hemp housewife. <laughs> <laughs> so Martin House has kind of been on the leading front when it comes to just trying new things, and most stick and some don't. The pickle beer, obviously, is one of the bigger ones where you guys have, what, 10, 12 different flavors at least, maybe 20? I mean, over the years, I would say it's approaching 20, if not past that. Yeah. Uh, 
It's got to be close to it for pickle, yeah. Pickle and then the seltzer, obviously, you guys have been doing great for that for years. So with this also, um, you know, going to the forefront, what does kind of the future look like for, because you have two flavors now, what does yeah. the future look like? I mean, so just, to, uh, you know, when it comes to flavor, we are, you know, I think that we are the the industry leaders at creating flavors that taste like what we say it tastes like, right? So, I mean, lemon, lime, and strawberries are some slam dunks for us. Uh, we've used, you know, we've, we've made this lemon, lime in, a, in a, our alcoholic uh, awesome sauce line, so we've used this before. Um, this, this particular strawberry, we've gone through, you know, testing of strawberry for years to find the perfect strawberry flavor. So, I mean, we really spent a lot of time developing these flavors to make sure it's the best tasting beverage on the market, no sugar. I mean, and so, so we're, I'm really, really pl- proud of these flavors. Um, and then, so the way we tie this back into Martin House and what we've done in the past, I mean, this is still really new, you know, so we want to kind of grow it on these two flavors, um, see what they see what they do. But, I mean, I think it's obvious that, you know, there's going to be spinoffs of flavors. Yeah. Once I mean, we need, we, need to, we need to make some year-round batches. We need to get some inroads into these right, big liquor right. chains get some set spots and then once we get some notor- more notoriety i think then we really you know we can we'll spin this in the martin house way i mean you know we're not gonna do crazy martin house stuff with it we're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're gonna it'll be a tamer line of flavors i believe no pizza no pe- mm-hmm. we'll probably not do pizza but i mean you know after you have a couple of pizza beer might I mean, might yeah, be pretty uh, good right oh that'd be a good kind uh, of uh, variety pack for your own like yeah once you've had a couple of these then you can have a couple of these <laughs> yeah 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 that's that's an interesting yeah we're, i mean you know that would that would be a that would be a, on the other side of gray area that we want to be in uh, but you can sell them separately as two separate items Obviously, and, and yes, that yes, will yes. always be legal or not it is legal yeah now um and hopefully forever but uh yeah i mean there's some other ideas different can sizes different mm-hmm. dosages um you know uh one really interesting thing is in you know Colorado, the marijuana legislation has been fighting against hemp because hemp is allowed to be sold in grocery stores uh, and not to the dispensary. Right. And so they have a law now that you can only have one milligram per can in a, in a beverage like this. Whoa. And so our call, we distribute to Colorado and our distributor there saying, is, if you make us a one milligram version of this, we'll do it right now. And so you know that's, that's the kind of stuff we're thinking about because the, I guess the one milligrams are just selling because people... Like, like to not have to go to the dispensary, mm-hmm. um, Makes sense. which is, you know, it's, it's a separate trip and you got to stand in the lobby and wait your turn. It's yeah. kind of weird. Here's I mean, once you get used to it, like when we visit there once a year, it's like, this is still really odd to me. I still don't like it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, every state <laughs> I go to is somewhat different, but it's almost all the yeah. same. Yeah. Like yes. here's my ID. Okay. Yeah. Now you can go back in this room. Yeah. And then sometimes it's really well lit. Sometimes it's very dimly lit. I'm like, what's going on around here? <laughs> uh, but yeah. So, I mean. I think that that we'll expect, you know, in the future as we grow, different dinosaurs on the cans, yeah. you know, different mm-hmm. flavors, different dosages, definitely, you know, spinoffs. So, I mean, did I cover that yeah, well? I think you killed it, but I mean, also, yeah, I mean, other brands, I mean, we can, I mean, yeah, dinosaur done the field with a 50-year-old mom that has the gummies like yeah. you talked about earlier right. so I right because your kid might be like "Ooh, dinosaurs and you're like no, not for you. so yeah this is what we're starting with we think it's very martin house i mean mm-hmm. you, you can tell it's a martin house can when you look at it it's fun it's interesting it's going to pop off the shelf but there's so many ways that we can go with this in different brands and varieties right. so i think yeah if we uh i think it's kind of limitless what we can do yeah with, Big yeah. Time. yes yeah like it might not always be powerhouse it might be you know hemp house mama house needs what, a minute yeah mama yeah. needs a minute <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mama needs a minute. <laughs> so with 420, obviously, right around the corner, what can people look forward to? Oh, gosh. Shoo, man. Sure. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm I think we all got some. I've got a whole list. I'm going to get my notes out of here. For us, yeah, we're having, um, like a half, we're having a 420 half Halloween party. So it's oh, like a Halloween. So nice. we're combining the two. That's perfect. So, you know, we have a lot of events up here. We have events every single week. Yep. Um, we had a thousand people out here last week, family day. That was awesome. So yeah, we're going to have a big gigantic 420 Halloween bash. Um, we're working on a special, a special beer release for that one, uh, based on half bakes. Ah. It's uh, Ken, Kenny's <laughs> Munchie Run. Oh, so every man. single thing he goes and buys at the store <laughs> on the Munchie Run, we're going to put that into a beer. Oh, I love and it. And that'll be kind of special and cool. But I can't. other than that, <laughs> usual shenanigans, music, vendors, big old party out here. Of course. And lots of presence of Power by Oak Arms yeah. and the whole crew. So that's what yeah, we're there doing There you go. Here. That's, that's what all is going to be in it. I'm not reading this out loud, but I am <laughs> drooling to myself. That's How a lot. How do you do all that? 
<laughs> exactly. How do they do all that? That's what I also, yeah, I love that you guys still do the 10.420. Um, <laughs> that's what I love so much about Martin House is like, like you said, you read it and you're like, oh, nope, that's exactly what it is. But when yeah. you put that much in it, I'm very curious how. I mean, you know, you can't put 20 ingredients in a beer and it tastes like all of them, so. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll eat